Hi, and welcome to episode three of Mischief Maker. I'm so happy to have you here. It's been a um, lovely couple weeks of making podcasts. I, I didn't expect to love it this much. And it's been so fun to get to know so many of you from different um, parts of the world and all your lovely comments, both on YouTube or in Ravelry. So it's been awesome. So thank you and welcome any new viewers. Um, we're really happy to have you here. So we have a lot to talk about today. A lot of fun things planned and I'm um, releasing the name of our giveaway winner. So that's a little later. So first, my name is Jade Prosser. On Stitch Mischief, I am on Stitch Mischief on Instagram. I'm Stitch Mischief. I'm also Stitch Mischief on Ravelry. And um, we have a Ravelry group set up called the Mischief Maker Podcast. We'd love it if you could come over and say hi. And um, yeah, drop by, come and see what's going on. So let's just get into it. I'm filming this in Vancouver, BC. Some people have asked. Um, it's been a bit of a doozy of a week, so we're kind of, I'm out of battery. <laughs> it's been a doozy of a week, so it's been testing and retesting and trying to figure out this camera situation, but I think we've got it. But first I have to change my battery again. Woo! All right, let's do it. <sighs> it's been that kind of day we've had I don't know, three, four, seven outtakes, trying to get the focus right and the light right. And it's kind of overcast today, but it's not cloud, it's smoke. So we've had some wild wildfires in the surrounding greater Vancouver area. So that's kind of a, a pain, but yeah. So we have lots of fun things to, to do today. So let's just get right into it. So for finished objects, I don't have anything new to offer in the finished object department because I didn't get very much knitting done this week. Just one of those weeks. Um, but I do have an exciting new finished object in my pattern department. So some of you have asked if I could make the Finch bucket have another smaller size. Like a, um, it's pretty large. The original one is very large. So I have... <laughs> currently still full of yarn. So this is my my finch bucket. I'm just gonna totally be doofus and empty here. Hold on. <laughs> There's a lot of yarn on the floor now. So here's my finch bucket. So it's very large. It's perfect in in my case I'm using it for all my um, yarns for my granny stripe crochet blanket. But it has a new, so this is the patchwork of the original Finch Bucket. It has a, a new size. So this is what I've been working on this week. I've been kind of crunching to get it done. So this is the little Finch Bucket. It measures about eight inches across, six and a half or so inches here, and then it's about eight inches tall. It's just perfect. I love it so much. So my birds of a feather, birds of a feather um, shawl is going to go in here. So by the time you're seeing this, if you've purchased it from me already, you'll be getting an email update or you should have gotten an email update um, saying that I've included another file for this new um, little finch bucket in into your um, purchase those emails um, and in Craftsy into your Craftsy library if you happen to have bought it through Craftsy. So this is, it has the uh, plain version, like the simple version, like this with just like the fabric on the top and then the casing in the bottom. And then I also did out, I'm so excited about this because it, it just happened to work out perfectly. I did up a patchwork version and coincidentally, the patchwork works perfect with one mini charm um, pack of fabric. So if you're not a quilter, a mini charm set is a little set of 2.5 inch squares that a fabric line, it'll all be one fabric line and they tend to be about 42 um, squares of fabric, which is exactly perfect. And I have one here, there we go. So it's about, 
this size. So a little square. And this little one I have here says, yeah, 42 squares of fabric. So it takes all the guesswork out of it and it makes it easier to um, have sort of a wide variety of fabrics. So yeah, so those who have the Finch bucket pattern will be getting this update land in your mailboxes. And those who buy it in the future will um, get all three, or there's a third file actually in my in my um, Finch bucket pattern that has sort of a cheater cheat sheet, printer friendly version that um, has no images. So it's easy to print and it kind of gets you your pattern in a nutshell. Once you're familiar with it, it's super handy to refer back to that instead of to the full illustrated version. So it'll have the cheat sheet, the regular finch bucket pattern and patchwork pattern, and then this little finch bucket pattern and patchwork pattern. So yes, I'm super excited to get that done. And um, our giveaway winner is going to be getting a little finch bucket. I'm so excited. A different one, not the one that I've shown you, so I'll show you that a little bit later. So that's been one of the things I've been working on, so I'm very happy to get that done. And um, yeah, it's been fun. So in the whip department, I have made some progress on my entrelac wrist warmers and um, I've begun <laughs> the entrelac it's hard to see but yeah I've switched over to the double pointed needles and it's just little triangles coming up so I'll link to the pattern in my notes which is also something new I've finally figured out how to do show notes <laughs> I'm sort of new to the whole podcasting world which is silly that I I'm like let's make a podcast when I'm new to watching podcasts. So show notes, super handy. Um, I've already added show notes to the Ravelry group for episode one. I'm hoping to do episode two today and then episode three. So that will be all up to date with links to what I'm talking about and the yarns and the patterns that I refer to in the podcast. And yeah, sorry, it's a little not knit heavy this week. It's, it's more sewing. Um, making some good progress on getting ready for Knit City, getting things organized and all the, the paper end of that. So it's been quite a quite a big job, but fun. Oh, and I wanted to say to everyone, thank you so much for all the comments. I'm sorry for apologizing so many times in the last podcast about my kids and kid noises. Um, they were quite rambunctious that day. They're always rambunctious, but right now my baby's sleeping, so it's awesome. It's perfect timing. I'm not used to normally I don't film so late in the day. It's it's almost dinner, but we've had some technical difficulties today, so it's been quite a uh, quite an ordeal to actually get to sit down and do it. But I'm glad we are because I wanted to make sure that I stick to my schedule. So um other whips, so in socks in the knit all the socks segment. I have made some good progress on my Coffee Talk socks and good news, Tracy is, it looks like probably releasing them, I think this week. I haven't been on Instagram that much this week, so I'm pretty sure I heard her say she would be releasing it, but she's on Instagram as uh, just, Tra just Tracy, so you can follow along to see when she's going to release them. But I have done, since I last talked, I think I was up to about here last time I saw you, and now I've done the heel. And Bellini, this is Shine. Both are on my sleek sock base. And yeah, so I've done turned the heel and the gusset. I always feel like once you've done your heel flap and gusset, the rest of the sock just flies by. It's like easy breezy. I don't know why it, it might be a mental thing, I'm not sure, but it just flies by. So that's coming along well. Yeah, so um I asked my usual question on Instagram this week about what kinds of things people wanted to ask me for a question and answer segment. Um, so you've already seen what's on my table a bit with the, with the new Finch, Little Finch Buckets. Um, I also made one for my daughter. And speaking of that, I have some exciting news. So she's going to do a little segment for us today um after thinking about it and so many of you 
gave me feedback about this and said you would love to see to meet her. Um, yeah, so we're going to have just a little segment where she can talk about what she's working on and what she has worked on and plans to work on in the future. Um, so that's shortly, but first somebody was asking to have a more um, in-depth look at the different bags that I carry in my shop. Although my my shop right now is very empty. Thank you very much. <laughs> Everyone's been so awesome. I can't keep stock in there right now. So it's been very lovely that they're moving along, which is awesome because that also helps me prep for knit study. So it makes sure that I have yarn to dye and more fabric for more bags and, and such. So we're moving along for knit study prep. So that's great. Um, so yeah, so let's talk about some of my basic bags. So you've seen this bag before. This is, it's really old. It's really dirty because <laughs> it's so old. It's the first time I ever made a peekaboo pouch. So this is back when I had the labels mischief made and the bottom's a clear vinyl. I don't know if you can see that. And the top is fabric and a zipper. So it's kind of the classic pouch size that I showed you last week. Anyhow, I haven't made very many of these lately and I don't plan to um, in the near future, but this is one of the bags since people have been asking to show what bags I have my projects in. So this is one of them. And you've seen both the little and the big finch buckets. And they're buried. Okay. Um, the little wee bra bags. Do you want to grab one of those little ones? Okay. So this is my, sorry, my daughter is just, just out of frame. We're ready for coming on in a second. So this is my twiggy size pouch. Twiggy size? Twiggy pouch. Um, it's a large, it's kind of a tall bag. So it's a good shawl or sweater size bag. I've in the last several months incorporated a um, wristlet and it's removable in case you need to remove it for some reason. So yeah, it's fully lined and I like to finish my bags nicely. Um, maybe a different one. Sorry. <laughs> and um, yeah, so this is the Twiggy and then I have a smaller one that I call the Twiggy Petite. So it's more like a small one or two skein project bag. It also has a wristlet. It's fully, yeah, fully finished and opens wide, just like my classic pouch. Cause I just can't, I can't make pouches that don't do that. <laughs> they have to open wide. And the reason I get a lot of questions asking if I'm, yeah, perfect. Thank you. If I'm going to make a pattern for the Twiggy pouch, and the thing is, no, the answer is no, for a couple of reasons. So my original classic pouch is based on the open wide pouch from Noodlehead, where Anna Graham, on, um, Noodlehead on, on Instagram, and she made a, a wonderful tutorial called the open wide pouch. And then I took, I made that many times, and then I kind of took her tutorial and made it my own and visually it looks just like the the open wide pouch I think I make it quite a bit differently so I have my own tutorial adjusted to her tutorial um on the open wide pouch but it's so it's constructed completely different but if you looked at it you'd say that's an open wide pouch so I will never make a pattern out of respect for Anna and it just you can yeah, so what I might do is make another a Twiggy tutorial with the, the measurements that I use for Twiggies, but I would never do something that would make it seem like I'm stealing. I would never do it for profit or stealing a pattern idea or something. So when I design a bag, I like, to, like it to be 100% my own, my own um, concept and implementation. So yeah, that's why there will never be a Twiggy pattern. But... One day I will redo my tutorial and make a Twiggy tutorial since the, it's just an adjustment on my second tutorial to the, or the, the second tutorial to the um, open my pouch and I'm totally blabbering, sorry. 
<laughs> oh, okay. Um, and the other bags that I've been carrying in my shop are the wee bra bags. So this is the knitter size. It's the larger size. So it's not crazy huge. It's just the right size for a small project or a sock or two. Like in my, in my wee bra, I have two sock projects usually because I can fit a few skeins of yarn, two, three, or one to two skeins and like a mini plus the project. So that fits. And I think this is the last one that's in my shop, but yeah, they're really, they're a great pattern. It's by Laura Zuckerkus, and I'm pretty sure I'm saying her name wrong, but I'll link to it in my show notes and I'll mention it down below on the screen. So this is the knitter size. And then this is the little one. It's just so cute. My has some threads. Everything in my house has threads. <laughs> so this is, yeah, the little mini size. Just perfect for um, a small sock project. I've had a lot of people buy them for sock projects. Just like compact bag. Or you could put notions in it and scissors and whatever you need for your knitting bag. So it's been a good seller for considering that I didn't mean to make it that size in the first place. So yeah, so those are two other bags and that's pretty much what I have in the shop uh, size wise. Um, yeah, so that answers that. So I'm gonna take a two second break and bring my daughter on for her little segment. Huh? Hi. So this is Skylar. She is 10 years old and my daughter and we, we've thought about this pretty hard but we are, um, yeah, we're okay with doing a little segment with her and her crafting stuff. And so we have opened up a little Instagram account for her crafting only, obviously monitored by me, but what's it called? It's called Little Stitch Maker, Little Stitch Maker. So I'll put a little link to the bottom. But yeah, so there's nothing in there yet. We're just brand spanking new in that department. So Sky, um, how long have you been knitting? Um, I learned to knit when I was five, but I learned to purl last year. Did that change things for you? Yes. <laughs> a lot cooler patterns. A lot cooler patterns once you can purl. Okay, so what have you made? Well, I've made this hat. It's a pattern by, I think it's can you Jane it Richmond. Mm -hmm. So there it is. It's called, I think it's called Renfrew. Renfrew, yeah. yes. It's Renfrew by Jane Richmond. I forget what we made it out of. We lost the yarn band, didn't we? Yep. <laughs> okay. So when we finished this, there was some yarn left over. So mom converted the pattern so it could go flat. So we decided to make a scarf. It tangled. I just need to get it up so you can see it. And it's pretty curled at the edges, but it's backwards. It's backwards. <laughs> so it's the same pattern. We're just going to do it until we finish the little ball of yarn. So I don't know if you can see that. So it's the mm -hmm. same sort of, yeah, I don't know if you can see <laughs> Zero idea. We'll post a picture on her Instagram once we get it up. Yeah. Once it's finished. So you're just using up what's left of your yarn. Yep. And then we have to sort of attach it like a little short scarf. Right. Like a shawl pin maybe? Yeah. That would work. And so what's your next project after that? After that, I want to make a cowl called, I think, Sagebrush by Knox Mountain Knit Co. I'm going to make it out of this dark gray that mom dyed. It's beautiful. And it's going to go perfect with this gray, gray, this, um, <laughs> this speckled yarn that I dyed myself. So this was her first attempt at dyeing yarn and... She followed all the rules. She was very safe. But she went at it with a diagram of how she wanted to dye her yarn. And she did it. She did it just the, that way. And let's just see. I don't know. I don't know if my phone will, or my phone, my camera will do this. But if, uh, no. So it's kind of greens and pinks and blues. And... I think it was only pink, yellow, green, and blue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, next time I make something like this, I'm going to just make it speckled, not dye and speckled on the same that's part of learning because i wanted a bit more white on it mm -hmm. so next time i'll that's beautiful I'll do that. so they'll go together like perfect. 
Awesome. So, so that's sagebrush coming up after her scarf. And then oh, what's that? this is the bag that mom just finished. It's adorable and winter themed. So there's like, yeah, there's little kids skating on the outside and it's sparkly. If you see here, it almost looks like they're going on sparkly pavement. <laughs> or ice. Or ice. <laughs> or I mean, it is scooters. <laughs> uh, is it really? It looks like it, yeah. And then on the inside, it's scarves. No, you can see that. Yeah, little scarves going along, which is like a completely adorable bag. <laughs> so the, the fabric is, I think, Sherbet Pips by Anila Hui. Um, and the bottom is a sparkle Robert Kaufman in gray. It has an actual name, but I don't remember what it is. Yeah, so that's her new project bag. It occurred to me this morning that she didn't really have any project bag that was bigger than an oceans pouch so now that she's actually really knitting and turning out good i figured it was time she had a little finch bucket so what do you like about crafting well i like that in crafting you can use all of your imagination not just like other things where you can only use like a little bit or half of it in crafting you can make all of it i mean this you made a winter pouch. It's like amazing. <laughs> so I like how you can do that. And I like that it's something me and you can do together. Yeah, that's, that's one of my favorite things about crafting with you too, actually, is Netflix and knitting. Netflix and knitting. What other crafts do you do? I quilt, I needle felt, I draw. Okay. I really, really like drawing. So you recently finished your first quilt that you started back when you were five years old. So she brought it along with her to show you. It's like a, a lightweight quilt, though very large. It fits in my bed. So this is yeah, her quilt. Longer than it's my showing bed. a little bit blown out here. <laughs> and Skyler. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she pieced it with my help when she was little and then picked it up again when she was older. And then my good friend Tanya, so precise, offered to have Skylar come over and use her long arm and quilt it. So that was amazing. Did you love it? Yes. And at the bottom, she, um, where's the problem? You're not going to show up. Oh, okay. she, we can probably post it later. Maybe. So she wrote my name and then covered it in, I think it's pronounced wreath. A wreath, yeah. Yeah, so encircled it with a wreath. Yeah. So it's like flowers. I don't think you can see it. No, I don't think so either. But it's there. <laughs> Handwritten. I might take a picture and put a picture in, in the podcast. Awesome. She's good. So, yeah, and she's also taken up felting. She first learned how to felt actually at our first Knit City that we ever went to. We went together, and she was little, and we made a time. Yeah, I lost it so many times. If it, I'm I sure it's it. here somewhere. I found it in my raincoat once, and I think it might actually be in the garage now. Since there's a, that's where my raincoat is. That's a good place I should check out. Yeah, maybe. All right. Yeah. So thank you for coming on, Skyler. And I can't wait to see what you make next. I can't wait to. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Okay. So, okay. So that was really fun. Um, thank you for coming on, Sky. So for me, pardon me, I have like hiccups. Ah. Oh question and answer segment. Um, I have had so many people ask me, what's in the green colander? <laughs> so, and also how do you hang your zippers? So I said, I was going to talk about that a little this week. As for the zippers, um, you can see behind me up there, there's like a rack. It's just a, a uh, utensil holder from Ikea. And when I bought it, Ikea also sold these little little S-hooks. So, see that? Yeah, little S-hooks. So what I do, somebody posted it about it years and years ago. I can't remember who, how they stored zippers. Because previous to that, I had all my zippers in a bin, all sizes, all colors, and finding what I needed took forever. So what I do to store them is I sort them first by color. So here's one color. 
and then I sort them by size. And then I attach them at the top. I'll take some zoom up closest of zoom up closest zoomed up photos of my wall. But here's the um, it's like a large safety pin. So each size of each color gets their own safety pin. So I have like that's 18 inch, 14 inch, 10 inch, I think, and 12 inch, or 8 inch. And so then each hook gets its own color unless there are a lot, in which case I split them between two hooks or what have you. So yeah, so that's how I store my zippers. Super cheap. Um, if I run out of space, I just go and get more S hooks and someday I might need a different rack too, but for now it's worked great. The other question was, what is in this green colander? So the actual colander, I think I saw at Home Sense and I loved it so much I knew I wasn't leaving because it's kind of vintagey and fun and had to come home with me. So what I store in here, because I'm waiting to get a board, um, kind of like a cork board where I can hang little hooks to hang these up individually by color, but it's all my embroidery floss. So I'll do, I'll take a picture of this too, since I'm having some problems with focusing. But yeah, so I store all my embroidery floss wrapped around a safety pin. And then I penciled on each safety pin, what number it is. So the like DMC floss and then the number. So that's been super useful for organizing. And it's just so pretty. I love having a nice bowl of floss, but now you don't have to wonder what is in the green color. <laughs> So I was like, what's in the past a strainer? <laughs> floss. Of course, there's floss in there. Um, yeah, so that was two things. Sorry, lost my notes. Um, that people keep asking about. Another question was, how do I hang my mini quilts? And I just hang them using a little sewing pin, like just a tiny little straight pin in each corner. You can't really see them from far away. And they do fine at holding them up. And they're also really not very um, damaging to the wall, which helps quite a bit. All right. One person asked, was I born and raised in BC? I was not. I was actually born, and so was my husband. And this is not linked, but just coincidental, that we were both born in Montreal. And then we both moved out here when we were about three years old. He's five years older than me, so it's different times obviously but um yeah about three years old and then we I was raised in BC from then on kind of not far from here um so I forgot to write it down but another person asked what is my favorite quilt pattern that I've ever made and I'm actually sitting against it here and I would say it's definitely my favorite it's my Norway quilt and the pattern is by Thimble Blossoms. And of course I did mine rainbow. So I have all the different nine blocks for different colors of the rainbow. And they're always scrappy because I'm unable to make anything not scrappy with different colors of fabrics. And so there's a lot of bag fabrics that are special to me in this, in this quilt and Low volume, remember we talked about low volume last week? This is what low volume is. So all this kind of white cream fabrics, they're all different um, prints, if you were able to see close up. So that's my favorite quilt, my Norway quilt. And someone, my sister, asked me what's a good pattern for a beginner quilter. So something like what my daughter did where she has squares, just squares sewn together, or you could do like the half square triangles that I showed you last week, um, but they weren't trimmed, so it's hard to visualize. But half square triangles, or even something like this Norway quilt where it's basically, there's no curves and there's no um, Y seams would be a good first quilt. So yeah, so that is that, and I've lost my notes. <laughs> okay, um, another question. What was my first dye colorway? And that was Technologic. And the question was, do I still dye it? And I do sometimes, not a lot, because um, I've changed a lot in how I dye since then. 
but it is a fun one. Whenever I see the colors, I'm like, oh, that's it. I love it. Um, but yeah, Technologic, it's sort of like a cream speckles with green and purple, blue, kind of like a violet, bright purple. Yeah, and yellow, and yellow, yeah. That's what it was. <laughs> Sorry. And one of um, another question somebody asked is if Knit City is just knitting or or what have you. And it's everything yarn, fiber goodness. It's um, knitting, crochet, spinning, felting, you name it. If it has yarn fiber, it, it's there. There's also actually some booths with um, stitch markers. Um, Call them project bags, obviously. <laughs> I'll be there with project bags too, and yarn, stitch markers, uh, knitting jewelry, other sort of things for the fiber arts, like spinning equipment, looms, all that sort of stuff. So it's quite a comprehensive fair, and I'm so excited. It's coming up so fast. So, one more question. Somebody said, do I use yarn or thread to sew buttons on? I only ever sewn buttons on one thing. Nope, two things before, and I'm pretty sure I use thread just because I suspect it's stronger, but I'm not sure. I don't have an opinion really either way. Um, okay, so this next one's a little bit more in depth. What kind of obstacle have you overcome in your creative process and how did you, or have you overcome? I'm butchering the question, but sorry, Sylvia. Um, I would say I've had several things that have become really sort of challenging that I've managed to overcome. So the first one would be free motion quilting. So I initially bought that sewing machine that I showed you um, one or two podcasts ago so that I could free motion quilt. So free motion quilting is when you drop your feed dogs in your sewing machine and you can easily move your quilt through it. So you can stitch, like sort of like drawing with thread on your quilt. So when I first got it, I realized how absolutely terrible I am at free motion quilting and that it would take an awful lot of practice to get up to snuff. So I just took a bunch of junky fabric that I didn't care about and I made some quilt sandwiches and I literally just quilt the death out of them. I just over and over, over and I fill one up and do another one and toss it. And like, I think I did 12, 12 or so quilting sandwiches just to get used to how to move a quilt around um, under the needle and sort of draw on it with thread. And now I'm completely comfortable quilting my own quilts. I've never sent a quilt off to a quilter before. I would like to, but I'm kind of one of those weird people who's like, if I can do it myself, I'm gonna do it myself because that's part of the creative process for me. And it's also fun. Another one was pattern writing. Um, I have a full quilt pattern and a mini quilt pattern that are up in Craftsy. And that one, <laughs> it didn't do very well. So partly, I think, it, or mostly, it was because it's Y seams and it was something that most quilters find sort of challenging. I enjoy them, they're fine for me, but probably was a not great pattern to debut with. So my next pattern that I came out with that's not knitting related is the Finch Bucket and it's done so well. I'm so um, honored, honestly, for every single pattern sale that someone has said, hey, I wanna make this out of your pattern and that's just so humbling and amazing and I'm so happy that other people want to so having a pattern that is what people are looking for um it definitely was a process to get here with a couple patterns that didn't do so well and then to have one that's doing okay and it's it's surviving and doing good so that was definitely something that I had to kind of get my head wrapped around and keep trying because you're not always going to succeed the first time or the second time or the third time, but keep trying if you really want to do something or contribute something to the creative world. The last one was podcasting. I have been thinking about this since February 
and it's August now and I didn't start podcasting till August because I needed to sit there and like chew on it. <laughs> and then I was like, well, maybe I should wait till I've done X, Y, and Z or till this is perfect or till I've made that mini or till I've whatever. And finally I just realized that it just start, just start doing it and the words will come as long as I have a sort of structure to the episode and I'm totally rambling, but yeah, so that was one of the things I had to overcome creatively and I'm so glad I did because this whole podcasting thing has opened up my eyes to a whole world of people from all over that I'm getting to chat with in our, in our Ravelry group um, from all these countries and I'm just so flattered that you want to follow along with us. All right. Um, somebody says, do I crochet? Yes, I do. <laughs> so this is my current, I have a few projects that are crochet, but this is my current one that I'm working on. It's so easy to knit. It's the granny stripes. Or so easy to crochet. That was a, a rookie comment. Um, when it, when I'm watching a show or something. Um, there are so many questions. Some of these will have to go to next week because it would be too, too lengthy of an episode. Otherwise, another question was when do I sleep or how do I sleep? Or like, you have so many balls in the air is the, the phrase that was used. Um, I don't sleep a lot. <laughs> I have an 18 monther who's teething his canines right now. And we are up a lot. We, me and him, not anybody else. Um, during the night, he pretty much nurses constantly while he's teething. So it's been somewhat exasperating. But when he's not teething, he sleeps through the night. So we're just trying to get through this. And then he should have a full mouth of teeth and be done for a while. So I can't wait for that. Um, so as far as having lots of different balls in the air, I do a lot of multitasking. I don't often sit and not do something else. Or if I'm doing one thing, I'm often thinking about doing another thing too, or what have you. Um, as far as balancing my household chores and things, our family is very much a group team effort sort of family. I've always taught my kids from young ages to have chores so everyone contributes. It's not a mom does everything kind of family, which I just, there would be, zero point in that because then you'd be sending your kids out with zero skills. So my kids are fully cooperative. They help with dishes and laundry and um, there's four of them. So it's mostly the upper two children that help the most because the little ones are little, but they, um, yeah, they're super helpful and everyone cooks together. We all, we do everything together. So it helps balance the load. So it's not all on me as a wife. Um, I do little things that sometimes help. I like to do my grocery shopping like one day a week instead of every day having to send my husband out to the grocery store or whatever and try and be more um, planned with meals and stuff, stuff like that. So one more question before our giveaway winner. So it was funny because I'm losing questions. I'm just remembering that people asked me something, but I didn't get a snapshot of the question. But the question was, what was my favorite knitted thing to date? And this ties into the one I just remembered, which was what are my favorite baby knits? And I couldn't find my little Atticus's baby sweater that I knit for him. It was a flax sweater by Tin Can Knits. It's somewhere in his bedroom. But yeah, so I knit that, but my very, very favorite thing to knit to date were these tiny little baby socks. They're just itty bitty. And the reason these were so special was because I didn't know if I would get my baby. And um, so he's my fourth baby. And I touched on this a little bit in my last podcast. And one day I'll give you the full story. But right now, um, I'll just give you bird's eye. Basically, I didn't know that I'd have him before having him, I had three miscarriages. So when I knew for sure I was having my baby, I knit him these little tiny socks and they only fit him for like the tiniest amount of time, but they were just so precious on his itty bitty little newborn feet. So they're my favorite knitted thing to date because of 
what they mean. And they meant I got my baby who is currently screaming in the other room, hollering. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was my most special. So he's had a bunch of little pairs. So his next size up is these little turtle pearl yarns in dream room. And then the kid keeps growing. His next size up was these gauge dye works socks in white light, I believe the color is. So they're the leftover yarn bits from my socks. I love using up leftovers on baby socks. And he needs another pair, which he's almost big enough to fit his hand-me-down socks from his older brother, Gideon. But yeah, so those are special. I love having that little kind of growth chart with his feet. And then also, so all these patterns or these socks, I just have my own sort of generic pattern for baby socks up. One day I'll write up and pop it on Ravelry, but yeah, so there that. And then I also made him a little, also my design, which I promised to make a pattern and never did. But I'm getting better about things like that. So, so it's just a little feral hat. It's hard to see. I'll do a close up before I put it in. But um, yeah, he wore it quite a bit and it worked well with his flax sweater, which was a, kind of a dark blue fabric. Yeah, so um, those are sort of my favorite knits. And baby, as far as baby knits go, anything tin can knits goes the full spectrum from baby to adult usually. And I love their patterns. Their patterns are always so well written. And I am going to pull the winner for the giveaway now. So... In our Ravelry group, we had, at the time that I started this, we had 276 entries of your favorite projects. And what's so funny is when I was reading them through, there's so many wonderful projects in there. I was reading through them and so many of you said your favorite project is the one you're working on. At. And that is how it should be. We should thoroughly enjoy what we're working on at that moment. So the random number generator gave me 223, which I'm going to quickly check in Ravelry to see who that is. Post 223 is. So it's, I'm not sure if I'm saying this right. M R I K E L. M. M. Raquel. I don't have her actual name here, but in Instagram, she's also M. Raquel. So congratulations, you're the winner. So I want to show you what you're winning. Okay, so for the giveaway, I made a little finch bucket for you, and it's out of this beautiful new fabric by um, Rifle Anna Rifle Bond or Rifle Paper Co. It's called English Garden, and I just got it in this week, and I was so excited to sew it up for you. So this is Rifle Paper Co. and this too, and then it has one set of pockets. I only did the one set on the this finch bucket on the inside it's a drawstring so yeah so I hope you love it so that's that's part one and then I've also included a skein out of love is a battlefield which is like a neon pink and orange and yellow with black speckles yarn it's one of my favorite colors that I dye so that is also yours and lastly this is something I've had in my brain ruminating for quite some time and I'll be selling these at Knit City so they're I'll do a close up too but it's these little tiny notions pouches that I designed I designed the fabric I designed the logo I designed the colors and made it just the way I wanted and then had it printed and then in sizes that I could make pouches with so now I'll have a bunch of rainbow oops <laughs> sorry rainbow theme pouches um, for Knit City and this one has like a nice forest green in it which I love so I thought that went well with your um your bag so you have a notions pouch and in your notions pouch you also have a set of neon silicone jelly markers or um stitch markers <laughs> sorry so little stitch markers in your notions pouch and your yarn and I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who entered and to Everybody who subscribed, it's just been astronomically mind-blowing how many people have 
come along to say hi and taking the time to make a comment or to watch my podcast and I'm just so flattered. Thank you so much. So I will be getting these out to my winner um, as soon as I can. So I'll send you a message on Ravelry. I hope you like it. And that's all she wrote. So I'm going to call it a day. It's been a long day, but I can't wait to see you next week. Thank you so much for following along. So again, it's, um, you can find a Ravelry group at Mischief Maker Podcast. I'm Stitch Mischief on Instagram. If you like our podcast, feel free to subscribe. It's been so lovely to be here today. So have a wonderful day. Thanks.